Hey everyone, I'm Chris Holmes up here in the top right corner, uh, senior programmer for River Run. Um, thanks for joining us. This is a Q&A with some of the cast and crew from the film Thorpe, which is hopefully the film that you all just watched. Otherwise, this might not make a whole lot of sense to you, but uh, I want to thank these gentlemen for joining us. I'm going to go counterclockwise. No, I'm going to go clockwise. To below me, we have Walker Hare, who is the writer of the film and uh, he, I believe in the film for a brief, no, he's the star, star of the film. Brief moment, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> no mustache, throws you off. Eyes off it, you know. And then in the lower left quadrant, Dennis Donovan, who is the director of the film. Uh, other credits I'm missing, Dennis? <laughs> Good question. Uh, nothing important. Nothing important. <laughs> yeah. Okay, moving on then. Just the director. And then uh, above him is Andrew Terlizzi, who is a producer on the film. And also I wanted to end there because he is a proud alum of UNC School of the Arts here in Winston-Salem. And uh, from what I understand, this is also your first foray into the motion picture world. Uh, you went through um, the design and production program at, at School of the Arts, is that right? Yeah, I was in the uh, stage management BFA track. And how long has it been? <laughs> I graduated in 2006, so quite a few years. Now I do a lot of... Um, Broadway national touring. Uh, so I do a lot of commercial theater and stuff. Um, but then when the opportunity came up to join the Thorpe team, uh, to join Liz uh, Prince, who our fellow UNC SA grad, uh, asked me to jump in with her and then took the opportunity. And that was a few years ago, so. And what about this project made her feel like it was the time for you to really jump into motion picture world? Uh, I think it was just like, the moment was just right. We, they were crowdsourcing uh, at the time and the, the team was, and she kind of reached out to me and I, I checked it out and uh, I just kind of fell in love with the product and I fell in love with the film and the team and decided to, to jump in a little bit more than just a financial supporter and hopefully support the whole film and the whole team uh, get the project finished. So it was just the right time. I was out on a show and, and Liz and I have been friends ever since back in school. Um, and so it was just, it was the perfect opportunity. He saved the film. That's fine. We can say that. <laughs> he saved the film. I, that sounds like there's a story there. No, I, I think, I think we were, we had done some stuff and we, it was like a nice boost of momentum when, when Andrew came on, it, it almost felt like we were, we were very close to, to, to really, I don't know, just, there's a lot of crazy stories, but I'll just say Andrew coming on board provided this necessary uh, boost of momentum. His support was exciting. It, it felt like now we were on to making something that we could actually finish. So I'll just I'll leave it at that. But it was a very it was a very exciting moment, I think, for all of us when when Andrew came on board. Nice. Yeah, I was reading through y'all's credits a little bit before this just to get a sense of the worlds that you had come from filmmaking wise. And um it seems like y'all have worked on some pretty uh, heavy duty, like big, not necessarily huge budget, but, you know, genre stuff, stuff with effects. And I'm sure this film uh, was, you know, pieced together on a shoestring budget like most indies are, but it feels like there's a lot of production value on screen. You know, there's a lot of, there's some really, um, you know, I, what's the word? I guess the, the visual effects are, are pretty solid, um, you know, the period stuff, the soundtrack feels uh, very sophisticated for an indie film like this. Um, stunts, you know, you've, you've got a boat chase or a boat ride. I mean, you've got a lot of toys on screen. So talk about uh, how you pull all that off. Maybe your background kind of helped with that a little bit. I think, yeah, it's a... Uh, so... I actually, in, in, in college, I made a film with Walker. Uh, we made a, a Western together out in South Dakota. I was a junior and it was sort of, it was the worst movie ever, but it was the greatest <laughs> experience, uh, greatest learning experience of my life. And I'll forever be thankful for it, right? So I think we did that. And then me personally, I did some stuff with Walker where we, we did some pretty crazy, wild action thriller type things. But I think what 
the big issue with those projects was maybe the story um, and and working with characters in more of an intimate way. I think we tried to maybe do too much too fast, um, but uh, we were very confident in those kind of things. So I think this story in particular, you know, when Walker and I were first talking about it, we wanted to make something that was very character driven um, and very scaled back. And also I was interested in diving into some more of the comedy space because that was something I didn't have much confidence in hmm. for in myself personally. So, uh, but, but what we did in the past, what Walker and I did in the past, I think allowed us to take some risks and, and try to do some at least semi crazy things in Thorpe uh, that maybe we wouldn't have been able to pull off if we didn't have the experience of those other projects, you know, in the past. There's also the whole team really pulled together to like bootstrap and just, I mean, everybody, especially uh, the fellow producer, Liz, she really just worked it with getting uh, donations and people to really believe in Thorpe and sort of come on board with us on the journey. And so we were able to do, I feel like, way more with the film than we would have ever been able to do if we had to, to truly, if it wasn't for that generosity of everybody in believing in Thorpe. Yeah, and it was also amazing. I'll just add that, like, it was amazing the the way, like, the writer did no favors for us. Uh, <laughs> really, like, screwed us over. And uh, it's like they always say, like, with, uh, you know, with, like, lower budget stuff, you know, it's like, keep your, your cast low, your locations minimal, like, no no children, no... Don't change no, costumes, every scene. No costume <laughs> changes, no period stuff, no uh, stunts. No, no water, no boats. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, all these things. Uh, dogs. No animals. No yeah, dogs. No, dog. no, no so, kids. Yeah. So there were like so many things that the, that were like, yeah, those, those they say not to do that, but are they? Sh you know, do we really have to listen to them? And and we found out pretty quickly, yeah, that, that those rules are there for for a reason. But that said, one of the amazing things about shooting outside of New York. Um, where uh, I was based, where most of us were based at the time, uh, or not shooting in LA, is that we had such a generosity of spirit too from the local community and the people of Danbury. Like they were super, they were amazing. Uh, I'll never forget when Dennis and I went in and started scouting these locations. Um, and and I think there was one location in the whole film that we actually had to go out and and pay for. Um, which is kind of unheard of really it, like there was such a like spirit of like opening their doors to us and this sense of um like i'll never forget we went into this 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 amazing location we look around and like oh my gosh this looks like 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 trapped in time and we mm -hmm. just like our jaw yeah. dropped is the bowling alley this our amazing shout big shout out to jerry and uh i don't know dennis should i should i stop telling this story or is this okay this is uh go for it <laughs> Uh, so, so, but so Jerry, this amazing guy, and he goes, oh yeah, come on in, huh? Ah. And he's, we're looking around and he's like, yeah, you know, this is, uh, this is the bowling alley. And he's like, well, so Jerry, has anyone ever, uh, has anyone ever shot a film? And, oh, you know, some people have come and like looked at it, but, uh, no, you know, it's never happened. And we're like, well, uh, we, we'd really love to shoot some scenes in our movie here. How, how, how well, what do you feel about it? He goes, ah, yeah, I think, I think we'd like that. Uh, how, how much do I got to pay you? <laughs> and we like, it was just like, Arr? and like Dennis and I look at each other like, uh, uh, what? <laughs> yeah, uh, don't worry, Jerry, we can, we'll waive the fee this time. Just <laughs> really like you. Uh, so we're really, and, and like that happened over and over again with, with locations like, you know, um, Liz got us a great location in the strip club where yeah. we, through a friend of a friend, there were just so many things that uh, put a lot of value on screen that were like favors from friends or like our fearless producers going out and, and, and making things happen. And that was like, uh, yeah, like we, we shot it in piecemeal, which was a blessing and a curse. And so like it allowed us to go out and find some things that if we were trying to jam, uh, jam it all in at once, we wouldn't have had, been able to have quite the same it just would have blown everything up in, in so many different ways. So the whole team and Diana too, who we haven't mentioned yet, she was also instrumental in, in helping uh, facilitate so many, uh, so many aspects of, of, of this ambitious 
uh, and f oftentimes foolhardy project. <laughs> well, to that too, even I would think assembling like just the period, not that it's a, a throwback period piece, but like the wardrobe, the headband, right. you know, all of those 80s details that you have in there could not could not have been simple, might have been cheap. You might have found uh, uh, creative ways to solve that. But I imagine Andrew and Liz, that was something that you all were very uh, instrumental in bringing about. Yeah, it was definitely the Liz and Diana. They were really involved in, I mean, everybody was wearing multiple hats. I mean, Liz also created the wigs and, and worked with the makeup. And then Diana was helping with styling and choreography. And so it was, everybody was like just bootstrapping and pulling together. So it was definitely a tiny team making a massive product for sure. And a shout out to our costume designer, Janet O'Neill, who uh, is now in Georgia. If you uh, shoot and film down there and you need someone who's awesome, because she, uh, as you could see, rocked. Yeah. And our production designer, Joanne, who yes, of course. did uh, maybe 30 roles besides that. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Definitely. Uh, here's a question. I'm not getting it from Twitter, but I, I imagine I would have if we had the set up that way. Uh, I think our audience is going to want to know what is a Thorpe? Where, where, what is a Thorpe? Where, where does that title come from? Dennis, you want me to? Uh... Yeah, why don't, you, uh, why don't you dive in and I'll clean up if necessary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so usually about how our relationship works. Uh, <laughs> so the, the kind of um, went the, the, the impetus of Thorpe kind of went back to a few of us, uh, Dennis, and, and uh, shout out to Phil, who's who was uh, shooting that. We we kind of, there were like a few of us who went out uh, around the area where he was. Like, what was that that place you were living in Connecticut at the time? Yeah, we we did a concept short in Stamford, Connecticut. Yeah, yeah. so I knew it was something for There's totally something totally Denver. different than Denver. <laughs> Very different. But we had we had no wig yet. It was literally just the mustache and like the idea of like what it kind of all developed out of this, like, what would it look like to um, see the world through the eyes of someone from the 80s? And we talked about all these different ways that we could kind of look at that. And it was kind of even before I think Stranger Things hit. So it's kind of like in the zeitgeist, you know, mm -hmm. popular culture. But we were talking like, is it someone who like, you know, is cryogenically frozen and then comes back? And, and it kind of part of it stemmed from one of the amazing, amazing actresses in it, the uh, little Rain Williams, who uh, was growing up on screen uh, with us uh, as we called her back year after year and uh, but it was uh, I, I worked on another feature with her and I saw her and this other super talented actor Aji the two of them whenever we would uh, we would like finish a take and they I was shooting out in the Hamptons and they would run off to this room and I just disappear and it was like what is this room just like covered in candy like what are they so <laughs> excited about and eventually one time I got invited to the kids room uh, to hang out and and they were there with their folks and they were like on their on their iPad or on their phone or whatever. And they were like super tapped into technology. And it was like, wow, this is, and Dennis and I started talking about this. Like, what, what does this mean to be a child today, to see the world through those eyes today? And so we kind of went off and shot this proof of concept where it was like, we had no idea what we were doing. We just threw this weird character on the streets of Connecticut and kind of like did the sort of like follow him around and did all these things. And at one point, I was just being a weirdo and uh, uh, this, it was, it was like wet or it was like, it just rained or something. And there was this glass. And I think I wrote the word Thor because at the time Thor Ragnarok or Thor something Thor <laughs> for many iterations had come out. And then I, and then I think I hesitated and then made a P and it was like Thorpe. And that kind of just became this thing. And then, uh, and then Dennis lot, we, we cut that footage together and people loved that. And then that was the sort of like, people were like fascinated by this, This who, what is this? And we, we still didn't know, we're like, it's cool, right? Now, Dennis, what, what are we gonna do? And so we kind of went and he locked me away in a cabin and uh, took away the key and said, write this thing, uh, which is mildly a joke. Uh, but we kind of developed this story and talked more and more about the story and kept spitballing about what this could possibly be. And so Thorpe became this alien who had to, uh, who came from the land of Thorpe and his parents are Thorpes, and uh, everyone there is a Thorpe, uh, regardless of gender, uh, skin color, 
um, sexual orientation. Any, there's nothing really. It's just the land of Thorpe. You're a Thorpe. And so it's, uh, it's a pretty wonderful place, actually. I'd love to go check out uh, Thorpe <laughs> right now. Um, great food on Thorpe. Uh, so yeah. that, to answer your question uh, 40 minutes later, uh, what is the Thorpe? Uh, Thorpe is a magical uh, planet where 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 Thorps are, are just happy and, and free. But they did come down here to Earth to see if there's anything worth uh, mining from us. And um, and there wasn't. There wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Uh, they took off. But Thorpe from the movie, he uh, he fell in love with this uh, you know with the yeah. best friend, and he never got to say goodbye. And so he's he's back and he's trying to find her. And, uh, and that, you know, obviously, if you just watch the movie, you will know that that's, uh, that's what happened, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> or if you're still asking yourself, what's the Thorpe, uh, we're in trouble. Well, sidebar conversation has, has the, I'm curious, has the backwards walking skill paid dividends in your life uh, beyond the film? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, couldn't, I could not list the number of ways. It has just really worked out well. Uh, I, as, as I was training so much training for this, uh, I would be at the, uh, I would go jogging in the streets, uh, backwards and learning to jog back. It just felt like right for the character. I don't remember like if it was Dennis's idea or my idea, but we kind of just was like, there were a lot of things was like, you know, throwing spaghetti, uh, plates of spaghetti at the wall. And then, and then being like, oh, we shouldn't have broken all these plates. And then, you know, cleaning up the spaghetti on the ground. And then like, oh, that's stuck in. So that was one of the many things that, this is a weird metaphor, but one of the many things that was like, why not try this? And so I just started doing it around New York and uh, ran into some cars, uh, <laughs> people occasionally. And so then I was like, oh, and I found out online, oh, we can do that. I can do this at the gym. And so I'd be at the gym on the treadmill you know, jogging backwards, getting lots of looks, but not as many as you'd expect because, like, it's New York. There's a bunch of weirdos here. Um, but it kind of, like, that's – was that the question? I don't know. I'm lost. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I ask only because I've, I've adopted that backwards running and walking around the house as a way to entertain my my one-year-old son. Oh, yeah. It's helped that's a awesome. lot. It's helped a lot in a pandemic to keep him entertained. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And now if you get yourself some of those light up shoes, you're going to be like, you'll be there. Oh, animal. yes. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Well, we'll have to, we'll have to uh, make that happen. Get some Thorpe branded shoes for you. Yeah. This, and if you're ever down here, we'll go, I'll go backwards jogging with you. I'd love that. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, when the sequel, uh, which is coming out in uh, uh, July of 2025, uh, which is set in Puerto Rico, that uh, when that comes out, we, we look forward to actually being together at the festival and, and every wall we'll <laughs> choose and we'll all go running together. I look forward to anything remotely like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, although we are going to, we are doing an in-person screening of the film during the festival, which is not nothing. I'm excited about that. I wish y'all could be here for it. Yeah. Um, I'm curious. I, I want to throw one to you, Dennis. Uh, uh, I'm just curious, I, I like to ask this to almost everyone, but is there a specific scene or sequence in the film that you uh, are most proud of for, for any specific reason? Um, or maybe you feel like it's most uh, representative of your directorial style or whatever it may be. It, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, it was a huge, uh, I'm so grateful for what everyone put into it because I, I, was, trying to, I was trying to do comedy you know, for the first time ever. Um, and that was uh, really scary and exciting. Uh, and thankful, I'm thankful for all the, all. so Walker found a lot of the talent. He did most of the casting and I'm just thankful for, we found a good group of people, right? I'm all about working with the right, like really just fun people to be around. I think, I think if the crew and the cast, uh, you know, provides a, a fun energy and they're willing to just try things and do things, then I think you get a better product out of it. So just, you know, thank you, Walker, for for doing that. But as as far as the scene goes, I think one of the things that excited me about the project was the was, was having these two people kind of get stuck in a space together, and they needed to work through something from their childhood to to move on with the rest of their lives. Like they're both stuck where they are in their lives, and they have to really go at each other uh, in order to move forward. And so, I would say the climax 
uh, was a huge moment for me, I think, in editing when I saw that coming together, especially with our guy, Yarko, uh, Yarko Hayatan Hayatan from Finland, who did all the music. I think the music is, is really important to the film. Um, and the music there, you know, he really blew my mind with, with what he pulled off. And then what our DP, Mike Jandola, pulled off visually, too. Um, that's all, that was a hard scene. It was a hard scene for Walker. It was a hard scene for Lucy. I think it was the hardest scene for Lucy. Um, so that and then we had this wild, happy accident happen, which I, I like to share. Um, that that blizzard happened. That snowstorm happened. Uh, it wasn't, you know, <laughs> this this film takes place in the summertime and we got hit really early with this snowstorm that was unexpected and we changed the whole climax to be outside in the in the snowstorm uh in the snow and it, when you watch it it's so it's so real that it that it actually doesn't look real it looks fake it looks like you know maybe we filmed that on green screen and added in snow later or something but that was actually them outside in the snow freezing uh and just giving everything they had Wow. It was crazy. Uh, we blasted Walker with the biggest light we could find. And, and uh, I don't know. It was special, a special moment. So I would say that whole sequence and how everyone came together for that was my was my favorite thing. Yeah, that was, a, I mean, an unexpected, like <laughs> yeah. really poignant ending to a, a film that was a pretty fun, you know, a real fun ride. I was not expecting that. I mean, definitely I mean, takes a dark turn. <laughs> it, weir it weirdly, I mean, it works very well, but I was not expecting that kind of, uh, uh, I guess it's, it's a, a, a relief or, or a, um, what's the word I'm looking for, for that uh, Sam character? Closure, I guess. Is the, the closure, yeah. The scene, especially with her mom and her dad. Um, Man, you know that that's the type of scene that could really blow up in your face if it, if they didn't if they you know they pulled it off they and Walker did such a great job writing that moment too because that could come off you know in the totally wrong as well but and yeah very actress, thankful that that actress that plays that that part how did she uh, come to be involved in the project and come into the fold the the mom or to that plays Sam and Rachel that uh, plays Sam. Uh, that's Lucy Walters, who's a uh, super uh, great, amazing, talented, uh, wonderful, kind, spirited, uh, very uh, works all the time in TV. Um, she was a series regular on Power for a while. And I've just known her through for years and years coming up to the ranks in New York. And uh, we I think I, I got her involved in a previous project uh in the past and so she already had a relationship with Dennis and had loved working with him before and uh so she we kind of kind of just reached out to her with the script and she um she she really loved it she thought it would be challenging and fun and only a few days and ha -ha! <laughs> <laughs> you got her uh but yeah it was it was such a it was a wild experience in that like she we would shoot with her for two or three days and then she booked some huge thing and she would take off and she'd be in New Mexico for a while. And then we'd be like, when are you coming back? Uh, all right, can we steal you for a half a day here? And, and yeah. it, it was that way with a few of our actors. And um, even like Marlon, who played Pauline, the lady at the bowling alley, who's super talented and has like worked with Elvis and wow. is such a fun presence on the festival circuit, which is where I actually met her. I had another film up at the Rhode Island International Film Festival and she stood up and started talking about this, uh, I, this film she was a part of. And, and I was just like, oh my God, this is Pauline. And that was like kind of the hardest part to find because so many of the other parts I'd written, like even Rachel Sam, I'd written being like, Dennis and I were like, could you imagine if Lucy played this? That'd be amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then there was like things like, um, you know, like the little, t the child part, uh, you know, I, I wrote that and I was like, oh my gosh, rain would be amazing. That we originally that had been like just one scene and then we expanded it more and more as we we're influenced by other things. And so it, it was just uh, uh, back on uh, Marlon, she was, I met her at this thing. She was like telling story about how she'd acted with Elvis and uh, gotten to sing with Elvis and kissed him. And we kind of stole this moment that she had mentioned where, <laughs> Yeah, the alley and, little homage there. Yeah, so it was, uh, it was, it was. We were really lucky with so much of the cast coming on and 
And she did. She did all of her scenes in one day. And I just want to point out how crazy that is, like how professional and, and talented she is, because those are those are not easy scenes to do. And for her to do them all in one day is is insane. Uh, so that was that was really incredible. And that's actually one of my favorite storylines is the whole Thor Pauline relationship. And then the scene where Pauline resolves and she meets uh, her potential love. That is like my favorite moment. I cannot stop like tearing up during that one. So. And working like that though, how, how, what did that do? How long were you actually in production? That must have prolonged the shooting process quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have no idea. It was, like probably, it was probably two years. You're kidding. <laughs> on and off for two years. Wow. I wish we were. Yeah. I mean, when you're when you're working on restricted budget and you're just bootstrapping everything, it really, I think it slows you down, but also challenges you to to be creative and find new ways to, like, I think everyone who sees our film has, has no idea that it was produced on such a micro budget, for sure. No, no doubt. And then, and you put all that work in and to reward yourself with a great film and then write it headlong into the the middle of a pandemic to try to bring it out so um of course first of all how does that affected i mean with a comedy especially the it seems like test audiences or or work in progress screenings to kind of figure out where the the laughs are hitting and where they're not is very valuable and i would think that would it was something you would not have had much ability to do so how are you coming through post in a pandemic and then now what's the plan for bringing this out into the world beyond festivals yeah um we we were able to have some very early drafts we were lucky we snuck those in before the pandemic um a couple of nights i think in in new york right where we were able to share it we did one uh where diana works as well with all her coworkers. so we, we were able to get in and hear some live some laughs we got to hear where things didn't hit um so we did beat it a little bit just we just beat it uh which was good so we lucked out there in terms of test screening it um as far as where it's going to go you know where you know the goal is to find a platform find a home for it i think i think it can build a you know it's a you know i think a lot of people could really love this film i think a lot of people might not like it right i think it's a very it's very unique in that way um, so I think there is a home for it and we're excited to find that home. I think now there's a lot of platforms actually that might be interested, more interested in something like this because of the halt, you know, in the industry. I think, I think some places are, are need, need some content to keep their platforms going. So, so we'll see. Um, we're excited to, to find out where it's, where it's going to land. I'm sure. Yeah. We have a, a, a sales agent that we're working with and we've, uh, we're pretty close to, to figuring out a distributor. Um, so it's, that still doesn't guarantee anything, but um, we, we just really want people to see the film. And like yeah. Dennis said, it's not for everybody. We feel like there are people that will love it and there are people that will, maybe not, maybe hate's the wrong word, but just, I mean, my, I, my, my family, I have family members who fell asleep watching it. <laughs> <laughs> forget if you were watching this it would never forget no uh but it's like it's just it's not for everybody but the people who really connect to it uh everyone connects to it for a different reason and we just really want to get it out there and so yeah living on a streaming platform would be ideal we'd love for many people to see it and experience it and and have a chance to connect with our crazy thorpe you just need to figure out which platform specifically specializes in a comedic sci-fi fish out of water <laughs> coming of age dramatic thriller and then you're golden you're exactly right i had to write that down so i could work it in here but i love that i love that little genre tag yeah uh, well we've been we've had a good run here I, I think that we've covered a lot i really appreciate you you all finding time to get together and um interact with our audience uh like I said, we wish you were here. Uh, thanks once again. I hope you all enjoyed the film. And uh, any I know, any parting words that y'all wish to impart? It, oh, so did you? you can go, know. Walker. Oh, I was just gonna say if there's any uh, filmmakers out there in the audience, like uh, for 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 so long we we were kind of like 
slowly wading in or we were waiting for something. And, and with this, eventually, like we kind of just went and we were not ready. And uh, we, we, we kind of like figured out how to swim as not that we didn't know how to make films, but like in terms of the funding, in terms of the locations, the cast, everything, we just jumped in and kind of hoped that, that and trusted in that other people would, would come along with us. And so uh, if there's any young filmmakers out there in the audience watching, I would say like, just, just jump in the water and find some, some collaborators that are down to, to get wet with you. And that sounded weird, but uh, I, th I think you just like, you just gotta, you just gotta, you just gotta make it is essentially what I'm trying to say. Nice. I think that's well said. Um, maybe not butt naked like your character does, but jump in. <laughs> Wear clothes. Jump in the water, but clothed. Yeah. All right. Tombstone. <laughs> well, cool. Well, thanks once again, y'all. Um, hope you're able to make it down here for a future river run in real life when we get that opportunity. And best of luck uh, with future screenings and getting the film out there. Keep us posted with what happens with it. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks it. So Thanks, Chris. Y'all take care.